top five questions from the Pac-12 TV scandal that remain. Of course, we've talked to Bob Thompson and uh, John Wilner today, so um, those things can can kind of get ironed out. But just to kind of re-highlight this, and Jacob Wilson uh, joins me here on this particular top five uh, today because uh, a little insider information we're pre-recording this. I'm just going to tell you right now, this is not live. We're pre-recording this. I don't want to deceive you as viewers of the show. I mean, are, are the viewers wondering how Craig got so youthful and healthy looking? Yeah, I, uh, and where Smokey just went. Like, see, look, there's just his chair right there. I mean, nothing in there. So we could lie about it, or we could just, you know, be forthcoming with the people. And I think yeah. that I think that's what we want from our American leadership. So, um uh, Oh, and here, <laughs> here comes Smokey now uh, as we're doing this. But uh, top five questions from the Pac-12 scandal, and Smokey can jump on uh, when he wants. Do you want to just cop on? I'm going to have fun with it. Okay. No, no, no. Um, number five, has this slowed down the TV deal? If I was a television partner, and these are networks and not Comcast, which is uh, reportedly – the person but if i was a tv partner trying to do this jacob i would feel a little bit suspicious about the pac-12 and their dealings moving forward so i don't know if i want to like make a deal until all this is resolved absolutely i mean the pack or the i mean amazon prime especially they've had enough of you know criticisms from the disastrous lineup of games they had in the nfl this year and so I think the last thing they want to do is to strike up any kind of a deal with the Pac-12 before it's really been vetted and, you know, all of the dust has really settled on, on this, you know, entire situation. Well, you look at the timeline, it kind of makes sense that, like, in October is when this audit popped. Like, they did it, you know, that goes through the holidays and all all of that. We're in January now. George Klyovkov kind of kept saying that he expected something to happen, but I think that's maybe just, this is me reading between the lines, that maybe he was expecting this to get cleared up before then. Mm -hmm. Now that it is, we'll see what happens, but um, I'm sure this has slowed the TV deal down. Oh, absolutely. They're, they're, they're going to have to actually go back and, and really get a full you know report on an investigation well, as to what happened. Well, the other thing is like, this is also, so if you're trying to get a raise on your media so if you tell everybody that you're getting this much per year per school and you have, say, $10 million extra every year, well, then that's not really what you were getting. You were getting overpaid, so now you have to have a more realistic number. So that that also, uh, that's for the members and all that other stuff, too. And this is for the Pac-12 networks. This isn't for ESPN and Fox, but this is, you know, though those numbers from Pac-12 networks and all of that affects the deal with ESPN and Fox because, you know, you're trying to make all this money in all these different pieces and have to move on number four uh for comcast how can you not notice overpaying 50 million dollars and if not for the pac-12 telling comcast this could have gone on for much longer yeah yeah i i don't even know like it's it could could be uh i mean that's that's what i would like to know like if i'm if i'm on the board at comcast and I am trying to figure out why are we overpaying? Then I start wondering what else are we overpaying and what else are we not noticing? And how do we make our compliance better? Because that would make me nervous if, you know, the PAC 12 had to tell me that, oops, we kept $50 million because these guys, we had an audit, we told the people in charge, and then they just didn't do anything with that information. I mean, it it kind of takes me back to the lemonade stand metaphor. You know, mm -hmm. when your parents give you $10 to run a lemonade stand and they, you know, you learn that it only costs six dollars. Are, are you going to give that four dollars back? I mean, that, that's that's kind of the the vibe that I'm getting from. You know, how can they not notice? Well, maybe because no one was looking, or maybe because you know they didn't want to you know say anything. Because why admit that you're getting paid? Oh more than you're supposed to be getting paid when you, you know, it's nice to have a couple extra well, million dollars. Well, I get dollars. why the guys did it. I want to know how Comcast didn't know. Like, how Comcast let this continue to happen. Because if I'm Comcast, I'm worried about my own internal things of, like, who's sending out these checks to the Pac-12 uh, TV networks. Number three, why did they think they could get away with it? Like, after the one audit in the first year, why eventually you're going to have another audit, right? So they're going to come and get you. Yeah, yeah. So why keep doing it? I, I think it's riding the wave, Paul, because... Yeah. Like you don't think you're ever going to get caught when you have that much money and you're just living the good life. It happens in sports. It happens in politics. It happens in, you know, you know, every single movie that you see about someone who becomes a drug kingpin, like it happens every single time. It's just, you know, you never think you're going to get caught, but I guess there is a remaining question to that argument is who, who has been out there that hasn't gotten caught. Yeah. 
I mean, there, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Number two, will there be criminal charges coming? Because you're talking about embezzling $50 million and not reporting and then distributing that money. So then like, it's not like this money was sitting in escrow in an account where they could just pay it back. <laughs> they distributed it out to the PAC 12 schools who then assumably have spent the money or budgeted somewhere if they haven't spent it yet. So if you are, you know, Brent Willman, uh, who was the, the, Pac-12 CFO and Pac-12 Net Network President Mark Shukin, then how do you, like, are you going to have to sit in front of a jury of your peers and explain this out? I, I mean, and this is going to be up to the, you know, the district attorney or state's attorney in, in San Francisco more than likely. Yeah, but. I mean, it'll be interesting to see, like, how many people actually face charges or if it's just these two um, uh, people that are, you know, being kind of this, made the scapegoat right now. It seems like a lot of times in sports, when money crimes, you know, white collar crimes have been committed, they try to locate one or two main people, move on and just, you know, carry on business as usual. And I think, you know, the Pac-12, it's it's kind of up, up in the air right now with UCLA and USC leaving. Everyone's talking about what Oregon and Washington are going to do. I think they're going to want to try and get this thing cleaned up and moved past as quickly as possible. And, you know, maybe just have one or two guys be the scapegoat. Yeah. And number, yeah, I don't know. But, and then number one, uh, what did Larry Scott know? He was the conference commissioner at the time. These are the guys, the CFO and the PAC 12 network head that you would think would have to be in place to, you know, to run a scandal of this magnitude, but the commissioner not knowing or seeing, or, you know, because at the beginning of the year, everybody knows what they're supposed to get. And then if they get 10 million extra bucks, all of a sudden, like, is he not asking questions? I mean, best case scenario, Larry Scott ends up like Pete Carroll. You know, he, yeah. he, he you know, pops him out before the actual news comes on. Yeah. But there's no way he didn't know. There's no way. There's that. There's absolutely. I mean, yeah, that's, that's what I think. He's, he, oh, he had to know something. Like, did he know everything? Did he not want to know? Like, where did, where did it move on, uh, you know, from there? And, and that's, that's a question. Obviously, he's not the commissioner anymore um, and w was made not the commissioner because of, due in large part to the failings of the Pac-12 network overall. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think he just got out of Dodge while the getting was good. Paul. Yeah. Well, I mean, clearly, but that doesn't mean that he wasn't a part of this too. He, that, he that just, definitely, that definitely needs to be questioned. He, he just might be lucky that he was not working there when everybody found out. Mm -hmm. So we'll see uh, white collar crime. Like you said, is hard to, uh, it's hard to pin down. That's the top five. Thank you so much. Please, uh, share this with all your friends.